then today we're going to be taking a look at every single extension with Lumina Neo. So if you're stuck deciding which one is right for you or you just want to see how they work, today I have quite a few examples for each of the extensions. And today's video is sponsored by Skylim, but I really just want to show you how each of these extensions work. And to do that, I'm just going to be using some of my own images that I've taken over the years. I'm also going to try and not cut the video so you can see how they work in real time. By the way, we do have Olive here in the background. I spent like 10 minutes trying to get her to come inside so she could be with me while I'm recording this, but she just doesn't want to, so she's just outside the door. Let's start with HDR Merge. As you can see, I exposed one photo for what you can see out the window and the other photo for the building inside so I could see like the curtains and a little bit more details. I'm gonna select the cog and make sure auto alignment is ticked because I did shoot these photos handheld, so I wanna make sure that they're aligned perfectly when we're doing the HDR merge and as you can see it works pretty quickly and we've got a really nice balanced exposed photo. I wouldn't be able to get this kind of exposure in a single shot. I also have these two photos that I took of a castle in Germany. Again, I'm gonna continue making sure auto alignment is ticked because I just don't use a tripod a lot of the time and I'll select merge. We had these like beautiful pastel colors in the sky but then the foreground where the trees are were was a little bit dark. So just here with HDR merge, now we've got both those images together. and. As you can see, when you zoom in, we've got really nice alignment in here on the castle. And you can see there was a little bit of movement in the trees here, because I guess it was a little bit windy, but I think it looks really good overall. Next up, we have focus stacking. I took these macro photos of a of this camera on a tripod and my camera with the macro lens was on a tripod as well. And I took photos with my focus point in different sections of the camera. So here I've got it focused on the body of the camera. Here I've got it focused on the front of the lens. I took eight images all together. So I'm gonna drag them over here into focus stacking. Even though they should all be aligned already, I do just have auto alignment selected just in case and I'm gonna select stack. So I really like this feature because a lot of the time I do take photos of cameras and I have to choose whether the front of the lens is in focus or the branding of the camera body is in focus. So with focus stacking, I can actually have both in focus at the same time, which is really handy. So I'm just gonna double click on that and zoom in. Once we've merged it all together, you can see that everything here is in focus. That's done a really nice job. Even like the viewfinder is in focus, the hot shoe is in focus everything. It's also crazy that this camera looks pretty clean in real life to my eyes and then as soon as you take a photo with a macro lens you can just see every little bit of dust and grime that's still on there. We're gonna head back to this castle image that I took to take a look at upscale. So I took this photo on the Sony a7 IV and I'm gonna upscale it four times. You actually can't select six times upscale because I think the file would be way too huge. So we're gonna do four times and I'm gonna select upscale. So the current file size that we have is 7,000 by 4,600 pixels. And we're gonna see in just a minute how large this file is. I thought this would be a great one to do upscaling with because it is a very sharp image with lots of straight lines. So when we zoom in to the upscaled photo, we should be able to see how much of that detail it's retained. So we're going to zoom into the original photo first and then I'll zoom into the four times upscaled photo next. So let me just go back to the original photo. Let's zoom into 100%. That's how much I can zoom into my original a7 IV 33 megapixel sensor photo. Now let's head to our upscaled photo, which is right here. Now our file size is 28,000 by 18,600 pixels, which is absolutely huge. So now when I click to zoom into 100%, you can really get up and see all the details. So it does take a little bit to load when I'm moving it around just cause the file is so huge, but I'm really impressed with how much detail it's managed to retain. Next I have this image. I'm gonna head into edit because I think it's a a little bit overexposed for my liking and I'm just gonna make it a little bit more moody by bringing down the exposure and the highlights. Then I'm gonna head back to catalog and drag this over into upscale and I'm gonna upscale this uh, 
I think just two times is enough because I just want like a normal file size. When I took this photo, I was using the Canon 5D Mark II and I'm a little annoyed at myself that I used to shoot in MRAW, which is a smaller megapixel file. So you get like a smaller resolution file. And I kind of regret it because I wish I just had like the full resolution. So now I've changed my file from 3,800 by two and a half thousand pixels and by upscaling it two times, now we have a 7,700 by 5,100 pixel file. When you zoom in, um, I did not used to travel with a tripod, so I do have a little bit of motion blur in this photo. So this is where the next extension comes in handy. So I'm gonna go into edit and head to Super Sharp AI, which can get rid of motion blur in your photo. So I'm gonna select motion blur here and high, and we'll let it do its thing and try to get the photo to look a little bit sharper. Don't know why I never used to travel with a tripod, especially on like the 5D series, which doesn't have like IBIS. I think this photo, I took it at one over 100 seconds, which is not even that slow. So here's the before and here's the after of Super Sharp. By the way, if you haven't yet, please make sure to switch this video over into 4K so you can really see all the details and all the things that we're talking about. When you zoom in to 100%, you can still see a little bit of the motion blur there. So this is the before and this is the after. But I think when you're looking at the image as a whole, it's done a good enough job that I would post this image because I think it looks really nice now. This is the next image that we have to work with. I'm gonna head into develop and increase the exposure so we can see what we're doing here. And then I'm gonna go into Super Sharp AI and this time I'm gonna select masking and select brush. I'm gonna decrease the softness of the brush and make the brush a little smaller. And then I'm going to select both my hands because I only want the Super Sharp AI to work on my hands. So here is our selection. Then I'm gonna go into adjustments and I think I'm gonna select high. It looks like quite a lot of motion blur and we'll see what it does. So this photo was taken at a shutter speed of one over 320, which is not that slow, but I think I was moving around quite fast, which is why I've got motion blur only on my hands. So here we have the before and here we have the after. I think it's done a really good job, especially on the hand on the left. It's even added a bit of pattern back into my shirt as well. Let's take a look at Magic Light next, where you can alter what a light source looks like in your photo. In this image here, I've got the sun poking out in between a mountain and a tree, so I think it'll be perfect for that. Let's head into Magic Light. Here you can adjust the intensity and what the light source in your photo looks like. So I wanna make my light source super bright here. I'm also going to increase the size. So you can see as you increase it, it makes it look a little bit hazier, which is cool. And I have it at about 40-ish in the mid 40s. I'm also going to, I like the beam width there. I like that you can see a little sunburst. I think it looks cool. I'm also going to increase the glow and increase the clearness of the light as well. I'm also going to increase the brightness. I just wanna go really exaggerated here for this photo. And I'm gonna add a couple of beams too. I also like that you can change the rotation as well. So if you don't, for example, I don't really want that bottom beam aligning with the tree trunk. So you can just kind of change it so it blends into the photo a little more seamlessly. So here we have the before and here we have the after. So obviously that's a really exaggerated way to edit a photo with Magic Light. You can also decrease the size and increase the beam width to make it blend into your photo a little bit more as well. So here's a before and after of that. So that's a bit of a more natural effect to your image. I also have this image here. Let's increase the exposure to start with and then let's head into Magic Light. So I'm gonna increase the intensity and to make this look a bit more natural, let's bring down the number of beams to four. I think that looks pretty cool. I'm also going to increase the beam width and also increase the glow. I think that looks so cool. Okay, here's the before and here's the after. In this photo here, the sun is kind of just cropped out of the frame and it's already very soft in the photo. So when you go into magic light, the it doesn't actually work. You need a more defined light source for it to be able to work. So I do have this other image that I took in the town square in my hand 
just so happen to be covering the sun, so we've got a nice little sunburst here. So again, let's go into magic light, increase the intensity, and decrease the clearness, increase the brightness, and increase the number of beams as well. Okay, so here's the before and here's the after. It's just added a nice soft glow to the photo. Going back to this photo here, I want to test out background removal because we have a lot of details in this subject myself. So you can find background removal under the edit tab. It's here in layer properties if you select masking and here we have background removal AI. So when you select it, it's automatically going to select our subject. I do kind of wish that we had background removal just here with the rest of the extensions. It is a little bit of a maze to find it, but I guess it does make sense that it's under layers because once you've selected your subject, you can use the layers function here to import a photo from your library or use one of the stock images and you can change out the background of your photo. It's done a really good job selecting the subject here, even just like around my hair. It's done a great job and I had a lot of <laughs> frizzy hair that day as well. So I'm gonna select remove. And then when I go back to the catalog, you can see a little bit easier the outline just here. And I like that the outline is a little bit softer because it means that when you place a, a different background here, it blends in more seamlessly. Last but not least, let's take a look at noiseless AI. So I did show you noiseless AI in my last Luminar Neo video. So if you wanna watch that, it's more of like an editing tutorial. I'll leave it linked down in the description, but let's look at some more examples that I've taken. So this image here was taken on my Sony a7 III at ISO. 3,200, and as you can see, it is quite grainy. So I'm gonna head into edit and go to noiseless and select middle. So it does suggest for you which strength to use for noiseless AI, and you do also have to use a raw image for this to be able to work. So as you can see here, it has removed a lot of the noise. So here's the before and here's the after. I have a bonus round because this image was taken at ISO 80,000. You can see just how noisy it is. It looks quite horrendous. So let's go into noiseless and of course it's suggesting for us to use high. I'm definitely gonna do that. This photo I just took just for fun. It was getting really, really dark. It was right after the portraits that we took with the car headlights, so it was practically pitch black by the time I took this image. Let's increase our color denoise, decrease luminosity again. I'm also going to probably increase our sharpness. Okay, so let's see, let's do our before and after. That's pretty crazy that it's gotten rid of all that noise. And while we're here, just for fun, I also wanna increase all these sliders just right to 100 and we'll see what it does. So here's the before and here's the after. I actually really like what it looks like on this image in particular, just having all the sliders on 100. So that is all I have for today's video, taking a look at every single extension with Luminar Neo. I really, really hope you found that helpful. If you're interested in using Luminar Neo or using the extensions, please make sure to use the link in my description to get a discount. But otherwise, thank you so, so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I will see you all next time. Bye.